Look at this. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> Thank you for clicking on this video. I'm not expecting any drama in this cleanup of my Chrysnetia green light. <laughs> but yeah, <laughs> the fern has gotten a little out of hand, I would say now. While during the summer, I don't mind the fern so much because it helps me with my humidity. This is the worst it has ever been. And you know, this orchid has been in this pot since 2018. I think it's time maybe also to give her a pot that isn't broken think she deserves better than that so just a quick chill cleanup of my chrysnitzia green light and i hope that you enjoy the video and that you continue watching If everything goes according to plan, this is going to be so satisfying, at least for me and hopefully for my green light as well. The only thing <laughs> while I was soaking her, I was trying to figure out if she's going to come out easily because I can't lift the pot. The rim is gone. So I'm going to have to kind of pull her out from her structures without cracking anything, breaking any roots, snapping anything. So that was the only thing where I thought, how is this going to work out? Because I'm pulling quite hard now already and I don't feel any give. I'm trying not to squeeze the mask because clearly that's... Oh, phew. Squeezing the mask would make it more tight of a squeeze, but that's okay. That worked out. <laughs> the reason I left her in this pot for so long is because she's got small roots. She is a vandacious orchid. Yes, it is lekker and self-watering. But the roots aren't exactly, we'll see if I'm wrong, but the roots aren't exactly the kind that are going to fill a pot up very, very quickly. I've been trying to guide roots into this pot as best as possible, but you can tell that it's, you know, well, let's see. The pot has some give, not much, but some. Oh, I'm going to love it. I'm going to love this once this is over. I love ferns, but not when they get out of hand. And um, yeah. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> keep squeezing, I guess. I don't want to pull on her structures. She doesn't have a very strong stem. I'll be back when she comes out. <laughs> the thing is, I could cut the leaves. Oop, I could cut the leaves of the fern. Oop, give me a better visual. But that makes it more difficult to remove them, roots and all. I need to see where they are afterwards so that I'm not just plucking out individual fern roots. I want to see where the actual plant starts and ends. And if I can then pull out the fern with leaves and all, I feel I get more of the whole fern. Oh, wow. Okay. It's a bit, it's a bit delicado, as you can tell. Oh, I don't like how much force I'm using on the stem. Mm -mm -mm. You see, there are also viable roots that I need to be really mindful of. Maybe she's more rooted in than I thought. Maybe this isn't just a quick clean up and chill. Oh boy. Maybe I need to cancel an appointment. <laughs> wow, this pot is really brittle. <laughs> this is not one that was treated with bleach. This is not the ones that have been breaking before. This has been her pot from jump, but here she comes. Oh, wow. <laughs> I'm sorry, am I repeating myself? Oh my, oh my. Oh, this is gonna be wonderfully satisfying. I'm going to get a cleaner tray though, because when it comes to sorting the leka, I don't want all the bits of plastic in there, because I see that I've got grit in here as well. <laughs> Let me get a cleaner tray. What a shame we lost an active root right here. I didn't see that because of the fern, because I was more concerned about removing the fern as opposed to checking the roots around the rim. So this root was coming up and over. Quel dommage! That sucks. Alrighty, but not all is lost. I still have a root tip here. And let's hope we can keep it that way. And you can see that she was in a mixed bag of leka, and I put grit in there because I wasn't sure if a bandacious orchid would do well in Lekka and self-watering back in the day. This is 2018. 
I remember this grit. I still have a bit of it, but you see here, here's one bit of fern, and this is what I want to remove. Leaves and all, like that. Shake out my media. Yes, I recycle even the smallest part. I've got a whole stash of stuff to recycle, but for now, it's about the orchids. I've still got nice warm temperatures, and I just want to get them situated, cleaned up, broken pots eliminated to the best of my ability, as long as I can find inner pots that are the size of my masks. So I'm tackling them one by one. They haven't done too badly like this. I won't be adding grit this time around. From what I'm seeing here, I am going to go with large lecker. And that'll do just as well in the same size pot. My intention is to not downsize or potter in a larger pot. I have the same size. It's 18 centimeters and that's where she's going to go. Oh, careful. Yank. Oh, this doesn't look too good, this little root here. There we go. Oh my. I have my Darwinara blue charm as well since 2018. Not potted up, her pot is broken, but I don't think I need to address her this year. I'm gonna have a look at her afterwards, but see that? That was the purpose of keeping the fern intact. Collateral damage, root tip. She had been soaking in Bactophil, so it kind of surprises me that the root didn't come off. It's been soaking for 12 hours almost. <laughs> How I care for this orchid is, well, Lekka self-watering is her setup, and that is my humidity buffer because she loves high humidity. I can't provide that for her as much as I would like. It is working out okay, but you can see that my orchid is a little bit scrawny. She's lost a lot of leaves in the last two years. While I don't think that the fern roots had anything to do with suffocating her roots out, you could see how much space there was in between the roots. It's just time to get her cleaned up. The suffocating of the roots was not the reason I removed the ferns. I do have to miss this orchid a lot. Yes, I fill the reservoir with plain RO water during the winter most of the time because that is when she is not actively growing, but I only fill up the reservoir halfway during the winter just to make sure that I keep the evaporative cooling at bay. When she's in active growth, I do give her 300 parts per million of fertilizer into the reservoir, but what I also do is mist her on the daily several times a day when it is very, very warm because, well, I would love to encourage the stem to grow more roots. She should have bloomed for me again this season, but she hasn't the last two seasons. Well, I'm just hoping for her to get her strength back, grow more roots, get more foliage, and then we'll talk about blooms. But having the Neofalcata as a parent, you can imagine the blooms are cute, they're white, they're highly fragrant with a citrus fragrance, but their bloom duration is just as minimal as what a Falcata is in my climate. And being that she only puts out one spike with a couple of blooms for me here, in the perfect environment, her potential is so, so much more rewarding. Meanwhile, she's still alive. I appreciate that. And I'm going to do my best to see if I can't improve her quality of life with me here on the patio. Her light requirements are high. I have her on the east side during the growing season from the months of April throughout mid-November. That is where she gets the brightest light without scorching the leaves. She lives behind a white curtain. And once the sun has gotten over the building, I raise the curtain and I mean, she gets blasted with a lot of light. So it's not the lack of light that is why she's not blooming. It's just, she's not as strong as she could be to bloom. During the winter, I schlep her in and out on the daily because she can take my direct winter sun. So she comes out of the grow space and goes onto the rack, which would then be on the west side. Light requirements, ticks boxes. It's the lack of humidity. And that is where we are having a struggle, but you know, for not having the conditions 100% for this orchid to be super happy, I think we're doing okay. I have already lost others because the conditions weren't ideal. This one is a tough little cookie.
Whoop, whoop. Winning. I think this would be fern number 13, 14, and 15. <laughs> this is awesome. Quick thought, if anybody was in doubt about how to grow ferns in Lekka and self-watering, <laughs> don't worry, they love it. Pot up the plant and you're good to go. Now we can inspect what we've got left. I was hoping that she would do so much better with her root growth this season because I had some extraordinarily high humidity levels. Very unusual. And I thought, yay, these orchids are going to do really well. Didn't seem to work. I was hoping that the stem would start to bush out, grow more roots, but it didn't. So that was a bit of a bummer right there. Just checking to see if that root is viable. I'll just take it back a little bit and check. Still woody, still woody. Clean her up. I would love to take all these bracts out, but I'm not going to fuss with that. You can see I've been diligently removing it from the top stem, hoping for roots to grow. Now there's a little bit of a bump right there. That could be promising, but oh my goodness, the fern roots are gone. And that was what I was aiming for. This root is also looking a bit dodgy. Just makes our life easier when she goes back into the pot. And that is all woody to the end as well. Let's be a little bit more diligent about this because we're already on the homeward stretch. But if I'm not going to do this for another four years, we might as well take our time. Looks about right, even though she looks scrawny, but that is her. Nice. Nice root tips. One, two, three. We have some root tips that would like to improve and we're going to give them that chance because, oh, boo hoo, because they are going into fresh lecker and they're going to be without competition from anything so that they can progress and grow longer and hopefully hydrate the orchid more efficiently. I just want to make sure that I have the support that I need because she has grown much, much higher and taller since I got her, but I wonder if this support is a bit of... No, nope, we'll leave her in that support because if I'm thinking of another four years, the support is absolutely fine. And I'm thinking positively, yes. I'd be happy to have this orchid around in four years. Stronger and better than ever. Now we can see what we're doing. <laughs> we have a clear visual and everything is going in the pot and if I can get her in a little bit lower than she was that'll be great saves on the media and increases the humidity even more just going to be mindful of that one little bump I don't want the wire by that bump there we go Because this is large lecker and I want it to disperse nice and evenly into the gaps. I'm not putting it all in at once because it's going to cause a gridlock on itself. And this is just for aesthetics now. Even it out somehow. Let's see what it looks like when she's drained. <laughs> she is so clean. I hardly recognize my orchid. Woohoo! I love it. Look at all the garbage we got out of her. Oh my goodness. Thank goodness drama free with the exception of that one root tip, which is always a boo horrible moment. But I want to say thank you so very much. If you've watched this video, even though it was pretty straightforward, know that I appreciate that support very, very much. And if you would be so inclined and uh, like this nice and clean looking Chrysnetia green light, then please give the video a thumbs up. <laughs> Thank you so much for spending some time with me on your day today. I appreciate you so much. And seeing as you're here all the way to the end, I get to wish you a beautiful day on that one condition though, please, that you stay safe. Take care, bye. Oopsies, <laughs> if you're still here, little bonus clip. This is my Darwinara blue charm. She's got a spike, look at that. That would be a very timely spike. The last time she spiked, the blooms didn't make it because they were in the winter, but you can see that she is in a similar setup. 
her pot is also broken she is in active root growth the reservoir is empty so i'm just going to fill up with some calcium and magnesium but you can see also that her fern infestation isn't so radical and this is what i don't like just pulling off the leaves because that means ah i didn't get the roots i was hoping to get the roots and if i dig a little bit further will i be successful i don't know but it's worth a try she has had the best season ever look at how beautiful these leaves have grown this year very very pleased with her and yeah i was going to give her the same cleanup but i'm like yeah no she can stay another year i just want the fern out now that i've got my head wrapped around that and my fingers wrapped around the base of it let's see oh my goodness it's a stubborn one note to self don't let them get that big but we got it by jove we've got it happy days i can see a white root in there it's still safe good stuff be gone not you, but thank you for staying. Bye. <laughs>